to get that kind of a sound out of an acoustic drum set in a spare bedroom. It can be done. And so why am I using this microphone? The importance of where the microphone is. It's not so much the mic you're using. I mean, almost all of my microphones are SM57s, which are the go-to, you know, you can, it doubles as a hammer or whatever. Um, but uh, what this illustrates is the importance of the position of the microphone. And it depends on the kind of sound you're looking for. If, if you want uh, a lot of ambiance, if you want the room noise, then uh, you move the mics further away from the drums and you use fewer mics. And it depends on how many mics you have, what you can afford. I've been on a shoestring my whole life, so I got adept at recording with minimal equipment. This is the difference between this and this. Now, there's the camera microphone picking up my voice, and you can hear it echoing in the room. This is close mic'd, and you don't hear the room noise because the source that I'm amplifying, that I'm recording, is right at the microphone. So if that makes sense, that's, that's how it works. You want to minimize the gain. The gain just adjusts the sensitivity of the microphone. Gain is not volume. Gain increases that, that area, that sphere of sensitivity, depending on the uh, pickup pattern. And every microphone is different. And when you buy a microphone, it will come with uh, a, a specification sheet that shows pickup pattern. And it's not just the shape of the pattern at one frequency, it varies from frequency to frequency. So you look at that pattern, and I'll show you an example. Um, you can see how it's picking up different frequencies in different patterns. So it can, it can be a little confusing, but you look at it for a while and it starts to make sense. Here's a quick tour of how I have my microphones set up, and I have them set up this way to minimize the room sound. Um, this camera has a perfectly good microphone, but you can hear all the room noise, and it's not a particularly professional sounding audio. You can see, I try and get the Tom mics over the inside edge, so it's not picking up the high frequency overtones, which live around the outer edge of all the drums. So I try and get that the end of the mic over the edge of the tom. The snare, that's the best I can do because it physically gets in the way when I move to the small tom. Don't want to punch the snare mic in the face. There I'm using a B-52 on this floor tom. Almost all mics have the pickup pattern on the microphone. They're calling this hypercardioid. I can't remember what the difference is between supercardioid and hypocardioid, but this microphone, this shape here, and this is in alignment with the actual microphone. So its pickup pattern is pretty much hemispherical, but there is some pickup directly behind the mic. I haven't found that to be a problem with this mic. There's the pickup pattern on an SM57. That is a classic cardioid right there. So this is the microphone right there in the crease of the pattern. And then it picks up and its sensitivity will depend on how high you have the gain cranked up. So if you turn up the gain, it starts picking up everything and increase the signal from your primary source to the point where it will clip. And that's a no-no, obviously. So what you wanna do is you wanna get a good strong signal because the noise floor, that is the noise of all the electronic equipment and everything, is stable. And so if you can get above that, it minimizes the noise. You have a good, strong, clean signal without distorting or clipping. I've got two overheads. You don't have to have a lot of microphones to get a really good drum sound, but the advantage to a lot of microphones is it lets you close mic 
each drum, each source, and it gives you more control. And the closer you mic, the less room noise you get. Sometimes you want room noise. I'll do a real quick demonstration using the overheads only so you can get a feel for how the overheads not only pick up, mainly the overheads are for picking up the cymbals, but they do pick up a lot of the drums and they will also pick up room noise. So it adds a certain ambiance. Overheads and kick going with. Here's an interesting example. I'm gonna, I muted everything. All the mics are muted. And I'm gonna put this microphone on top of this floor tom to my left. And sometimes you want room acoustics and you can set microphones up. I've experimented with that. And then you can add in a little bit of that for ambiance, for puissance. <laughs> but I personally don't care for that. And so I don't bother with a lot of hysterical microphone arrangements. It depends on how you want your drums to sound. If you want that impossibly clean, professional sound, then you need to close mic and then that pretty much eliminates room acoustics and and then you can apply effects to it you can add a little reverb you could add a little delay be real careful because that can interfere with the timing of the song if you use a digital board you can if you have a problem frequency you can just home in on that one frequency and control it and um, you can just get that impossible, impossibly clean, super fine recorded drum sound.